everybody. Well, I decided to do a Thread Thursday. Yes, I know it's been a little while, but I had a few things to show and tell. So I thought, let's get on to it. Um, now, I got an order, the Thread Studio, and I saw some of Ariane's beautiful bits and pieces of silk and stuff for her improvisational stitching, and I got a bit excited. So I thought I'd get some bits and pieces that might inspire me. So I've got my... Here's my bit of paper so I know what out of the order is what. This is a bit of Margolin silk gauze. Look how gorgeous that is. That's um, just getting an edge here. You can really pull it apart a bit. It's very fine. Anyway, there's a metre of that. And it's got these just these beautiful edges that are all a bit... I think this would be great to do some stitching with. Right, that's one thing I got. Now this is hand dyed silk filigree. So this is going to be just beautiful colours. Going to really have fun playing with this. I don't want to take it out, I want to just keep it in until I'm using it. but. Looks like there's all different sorts of colours and you can pull out bits. It feels absolutely gorgeous. Look at that colour. It's just, even down to this more russety red. Amazing, fabulous. Now this, now this is now this must be the silk cocoon sheet. I'm going to assume. So this is all beautiful greens. Not sure how I can. Right, so one of this is silk cocoon sheet and one of this is silk tops. I think this is possibly silk tops. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is silk tops. It's like all the little bits. Anyway, there's bits like, I should be able to pull out bits and couch it down. I should be able to tease it out and use it as one whole great big piece. I just can't find a kind of an edge. Here's an edge. Look at that, just beautiful colours. There's these really thicker types. And then there's these very, very fine webby ones. So I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with these things that I've got from the Thread Studio. And then this one is, I do think it's probably the Silk Tops. All right. There's an end, here's an end. Look at it. How gorgeous. And I love, I love this range of colours. Look at that, the, oh, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? It's got pink right through to a, this purple colour, through to green. There's a bit of brown where they've overlapped the dyes. And then we get back through to the pink again, to a more creamy colour, and then into that green. Well, oh, I just want to sit and play and look at those. <laughs> anyway, that's that was my little treat that I got. We haven't done a Thread Thursday for a while. Well, I haven't done a stitch wheel. So uh, we're up to stem stitch, and I'm on my last wheel. So I've, I've moved my hoop over. And I'll just move it as I go around. This was one way I could keep it straight. Okay, so I'm left-handed, so I am... Kathy does it a different way than me, but I'm just going to do it the way that works for me. So one stitch. And then for this first one, Coming up in the middle. And all 
always keeping that on the same side we started. So this one we're going to come up going in, keeping the thread the way I've put it that way. Coming up at the end of the previous stitch. And same again all the way along the row. Of course, if you're using a variegated thread, it's going to have a really good effect, isn't it? As you can see multiple, um, multiple layers of different colours. Really enhances it. Right, so I don't need to come back up in here because I've just come in at the end of that line. Now I'm going to come in this end and do the same, still the same direction. Do my first line, coming up halfway between the two. And the second one, coming up at the end of this piece, this piece. I'm using a, I'm using the whole six strands. Could have done it a bit thinner. It's still quite an effective stitch though, isn't it? So what Kathy suggests is when you're getting to a circular shape like this, rather than do the next line and then come in, it's better to do this edge first and then backfill the gap. So halfway through, put the thread that side, come in here, back at the end of the previous stitch. Now, just fairly close, we are going to come in the row above it, that row in between, So I can see in between the two. Now I can see, Oops. this looks like a little bit of a gap here, so I'm going to fill that little spot. And I think fill this little spot here too. wobbly but uh, oh, it's quite interesting on the back too isn't it that's an interesting effect it's like a basket
Now, next one is outlines. I think I'll use maybe a yellow. Sort of yellow. It's a bit bright, I think. I wasn't trying to do super bright colours on this stitch wheel. Maybe a bit of this one. Right now, outline stitch. So basically, it really, if you've got a curve, it's best to, whether you're doing stems, it, it's really just the same stitch, just depends on which way you're going and which way you have your thread. So if you've got a curve, you always want to be doing it so that the curve has the string, thread, whatever you want to call it. on the outside of the curve. So it looks like an outline. It's just one of those things where it, I think it's just the same stitch, but what you would do would be just go, um, okay, I want the thread on the outside at that side, or I want the thread on that side, depending on what you're doing. Either way, this is creating an outline. Now, if this was just a line only, then that's how you would do it. Well, it's like a little croissant, isn't it? <laughs> so you'd start. All right, so if I'm doing it left-handed from this side, and I wanted to do this edge, and then fill it in after, doing it like this. I do find it, I think I find it the most effective when you're just doing a straight line, but it is designed that you can fill in, fill in these little bits. Well, this is definitely reminding me of a bit of bread. <laughs> a croissant or a, some bread of some sort.
Now I could probably fit in another little one in here. If you wanted to. Alright, I think this one was a little bit more successful than the stem stitch one. Looks a bit like I messed that up a bit. Alright, there we go. Let's outline stitch. Quite like that. It's neater on the back too. <laughs> Alright. So that's the uh, first one on the outer wheel for stitch wheel. For Thursday, I was thinking I want to do, do a little bit of a chat about this. I don't think I've covered it um, unless I showed it in a Tag Tuesday and I haven't done a Thread Thursday for a while. So I don't think I have covered this. So what I've got is a bit of old material from like it's like I think you've seen it me use it before it's just a bit of old upholstery material so any sort of material that you can find uh, so the method is really just to be basting down large stitches I tend to just go across and try to just get every single piece so as it's down, attached. See now with this one I can take that pin out because I know that that bit's attached. Now you can also you could also do this and then come back again with another lot of layer over the top. I think because it's, um, to me, I'm looking at each of these pieces already and just going, oh, well, that's how, well, that, they're, they're staying like that. There's not, you know, I'm not going to do layers over layers and cover up bits. I've just laid it out the way I like it and that's how it's staying. I'm taking the pins out as I go, so as I know where I've gone. I've used a black so as it sort of stands out quite a bit. And a long single thread, so I don't need to re-thread halfway. So just make sure with some of these, there are some little bits under, just make sure they're caught with the pins, with the stitching. Right, here's a little tricky bit here. Alright, let me just go across here and then maybe down. That might be a way to keep that one attached. Come across back here. Get a bit, this one t attached a bit better. So I've come down to the bottom now, so I'm getting a bit skew-if. Don't want to miss 
getting bits. Across the bottom and then across here. Then there's that little bit too. Right, I might, might have misjudged my thread after all that. You could do what some people do and just use a little bit of glue stick to get it down. But I don't see, in this situation, I don't really want to get in and get my sewing needle all caught with glue. So I'm happy to do it this way. Right, I definitely need to thread a bit more. Never mind. Nearly made it. So close. <laughs> that under there. I want that and that like that. That edge over there and that edge up there. These like that. Okay, nearly there. And just now want to tack these down in place. I think these, this is sometimes when they're a bit close and the edges are just very fine you want to probably give them a good tack down so they're in the right place that you want them to be when you're sewing with the sewing machine. So you can just pull all this out after you've sewn. Some people actually leave it in. I'm not sure. Well, I'm just going to leave that loose. Okay, I don't need pins. So it's ready now to be taken to the machine. Oh, is that a pin? Oh. Yeah. And I'll do exactly the same sort of thing. Squares, a couple of bits and pieces crossways, some different types of zigzags. And then it's like a beautifully quilted bit. So I've got two of these now. Both of them could be a little front cover for a little material journal. Now, what I haven't done on this is pulled out all these extra threads. If you've done them wide enough, you should be able to just pull these out. 
course, if you've sewn over a few of them, then they might be a bit harder to get out. But we don't need the basting stitches there. haven't as yet taken off the additional threads and there's a bit more on here I just really started and just went around I didn't stop and start but on this one I did a bit and then looked at it and decided where I needed more so I've got a few more stops and starts with this one quite a bit of basting on this so it's a little bit of a process to find them all and get them out. Now one thing, if I was going to use this as a little journal cover or a little art book cover, um, I would possibly thread all these through to the back and then put something else on here. Just a bit of plain material and then sew in the signatures just get rid of all the extra sometimes I like it I mean it's up to you really if you want to make something like this you might just be happy to just leave a lot of these little threads hanging but I think my preference in this particular one anyway because it because even though I was trying to stick to a blue theme it's still got a lot of busyness you know, it's got dots, it's got flowers, it's got writing, it's got stamps. So there's a, a butterfly, lace, it's sort of got everything. So maybe for me in this particular instance, I would thread them through and do a lining. And what about this one? Well, probably, um, all right, I already want to, I already want to snip these ones off. So that's how that's going already. This one through. So you can just pull it, you can just get that bit and pull it through. And if you want to be doubly secure, give it a little tie up and cut it. Even with this one, once again, if you wanted to, you could uh, line it. This one's definitely a bit ratty tatty on the edge over here. I'm going to pull this one through to the back. Now I'm going to make a few of these and the thing I'm thinking is that possibly when I've made a few I might want to put them together. You never know. <laughs> never know what. If they matched I would be, I might just sew them together like this and open them like that. If that was a lot, if, if this was like this and that was a seam, I would consider making a spine so that that width is the same as this width. So this might be a spine here, this just here between these two. All sorts of things you can do with these little patchwork pieces. Hope that gives you some ideas. For, for these two in particular though, because I'm obviously going to do a few more, I imagine that um, these are going to be this size. 
little booklets. All right, so I'm going to put these aside for now and work on something else. All right, I'm just going to finish this Thread Thursday off with finishing off my little stitches book, which has been a creative journey of play of different stitches and double up pages. So there's quite a lot in there. And now I am just up to these. Oh, so I, did I show this? I think I did show this. Maybe I didn't. Anyway, this was the last few pages. That was the applique we did on the tag. So I was just having a little bit more of a play. Flowers, lace. So I'm on my last two pages. So this is a bit of old um, material from a beautiful old dress that my sister had that I somehow managed to have and wished I fitted into but didn't so I thought I'm going to use the material because I loved it <laughs> anyway I'm just over stitching on it to create a bit more depth to it just doing a couple of bullion knots that sit over the top of flowers that are there. Actually I've done a few different things. I've done it again. I've done the thread over. Don't know how I manage that. There. Alright. So what I've done some bullion knots here over some um, now what, what did I do? I was doing split back stitch on there, some more bullion knots, French knots in the centre of the flowers, a couple of pistol stitches, went around this flower, some straight stitching down the side. So it's ready to go in. Now all through this book I have been gluing all the pages in like I do with most of my tags. I think this is the way I want it to be. Now I've got one more little thing I've been making. And it's just a free improvisational piece and I ended up putting crystals there, a bit of lace. Don't know if I've shown making this or not in the past. However, that's done and that's going in too. And this is my little reference book. I can go back through this if I'm feeling a bit stuck and thinking, oh, what stitch would I like to use? Or what idea could I use? Um, I can just go through this little reference book and have a bit of a squeeze. Let's see what works. And that'll shut like that. Now I'm aware I've got a little pocket here and a little pocket here. So I do have a little pockets for things. So I don't know if I'm going to put anything in them just now. But here it is, the completed little stitch book. Snip that off. Good chunky little book. Okay, so that's my little stitches book and that's it for Thread Thursday this time around. I have no idea when the next one's coming. It's a bit unpredictable. Anyway, I hope everyone's well and enjoying wherever you are in the world. And lots of love and hugs and hope to speak to you soon. 
Bye for now.